Hello, this is Steve Lensley, and welcome back to my shop. Before I start talking about today's project, I'd like to talk a little bit about project design. I am probably in the, one of the world's worst at designing projects, uh, and it's not because I don't understand the theory behind them. I understand about the golden mean and the golden ratio, or whatever you want to call it. I have rulers, compasses, I have French curves. I even made myself a Fibonacci gauge to help me measure out uh, projects and maintain that that 1 to 1.618 ratio that's the golden mean. All that's pretty much to, to no avail for the most part. Uh, I, I guess some people have the imagination and they can see certain projects in their minds and whatnot. Uh, but I rely basically on things I see on the internet. Uh, I subscribe to a lot of magazines, woodworking magazines, Woodsmith, uh, Fine Woodworking, Popular Woodworking, uh, Woodturning Design, a lot of different kinds of magazines. I'm always looking for inspirations on the internet um, for different projects, different project designs and whatnot. So it brings us to this project for this, this video. And, and I was in the need of a music box for a gift um, for a child that's under five. And I apologize that I don't remember exactly how old she is. I don't know, three or something like that. Anyway, uh, so I thought maybe a music box would be a good idea. But I, I could have taken my Fibonacci gauge and laid something out that was, uh, was pleasing to the eye. But mostly it would have just been a square or a rectangular box of some sort. Uh, so as I was searching through uh, Woodsmith Magazine, I'd come across issue 204, which was from earlier uh, this year. And they have a music box in there that I, I just really liked a lot. And um, so I decided that's what I was going to make. And, and this is what I came up with, uh, thanks to the magazine, of course. The people at Woodsmith, um, they seem to, I don't know what it is, but what, their designs I, I seem to like. Uh, they, they're always pleasing to me and whatnot. This, this is a walnut uh, music box. It's got an inlay that I purchased from inlays.com and I'll put their uh, link in the video and the comments to this video so if you want to check them out. They have a lot of different kind of inlays so this was all, I could never have done this, this was all like laser cut and everything and, and uh, it's on a mahogany background and the inlay going around or the, the banding going around is tulip wood. Uh, which I inlaid, I let into the, the sides of the box. So um, it's a nice size box. It's got a little uh, music moving in there. It's an 18 note. It plays uh, Somewhere Over the Rainbow from uh, Gone with the uh, not Gone with the Wind, from uh, Where's the Bond. So um, anyway, it was a very nice project. It's a, it's a very nice project to make. Uh, it'll make a very good gift, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to passing it on. So if you got a few minutes, stay tuned, and you can see how I made this nice little music box. All right, well, it's time to get started on our music box project. Uh, I have some of the uh, pieces here we're going to use in the, in the, in the music box. The, um, I face jointed all of them, then I run them through the drum sander and got them down to the dimension I want uh, I've showed that before, and truthfully, it's not all that exciting. So um, these two parts, uh, I've got down thickness down to three eighths of an inch, and they're going to be the s sides of the box. Uh, these three pieces, um, I got down to half an inch, and they're going to be miscellaneous parts. Um, I'm hoping that I can get enough pieces out of these three um, to finish up most of the most of the music box. Um, I like to keep fuse as few boards as, as possible to um, uh, keep the grain match kind of consistent. So uh, the good thing about walnut, it you know, it all looks good. So when you when you put some finish on it, it 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 just comes to life and really looks good. So I I really enjoy using it. Uh, I have some extra pieces. Um, you know, if this is not enough, I got some extra pieces. I got some. I got some pieces here I could use and cut pieces off of and um, use, but I'm trying to go with a, as I said, kind of gets a, a consistent grain type match. So next thing we're going to do is get set up with a saw and we're going to cut some of these pieces to the, to the proper size. We always use a good push block when we're making a cut like this. So. 
Alright, let's get started. cut method it gives us a nice piece is exactly an inch and a half and two pieces that are exactly the same. All right the next thing we got to do is cut the sides in the back and front the length. Um, the front is seven inches final length and the sides are three and a half but they're they're bevel cut so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take and cut them um, a little bit long and then once I get all the pieces cut I can reset the saw uh, to a <coughs> excuse me a bevel and then we can make those cuts I got a few other straight cuts that I need to need to make before I start tweaking with the saw so what I'm gonna do since it's first I'm gonna get a, si a side a front and a side out of this one and then I'm gonna have to get the uh, the back out of this this particular piece um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark off four inches or so on the uh, on the end of this board here and then cut off that. So but before I do that, I'll put some kind of little cabinet maker's triangle in there and about there so that we uh, can keep all of our pieces together. So this is a side. And then we'll go ahead and kind of line that up with the blade on the saw about. And then we'll make that cut. So um, now we're going to need to find a stop block and put on here because these need to be cut to the front and back need to be cut to seven inches. So we'll set a stock block over here at seven inches, and when we uh, we make that cut, we'll we'll be good. Both sides, the front and back, will be the same. The sides need to be cut as well. So we'll go ahead and find a stop block and put on there, and then we'll finish making the rest of the cut. should be exactly the same. And they are, which is, I love it when a plane comes together. So let's put this one on here. 
and reset the stock block somehow here. If we can, we might need to tilt it a little bit. Okay, we just turned the stop, stop block sideways because it was interfering with the, all the gadgets holding on the uh, auxiliary fence. So we got that set. We got it lined up with the curve. We'll go ahead and make those curves. All right, well, we still have the saw blade set to 22 and a half degrees. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut a bevel on the sides of the uh, corner block pieces. This is our test piece. So what we'll do is we'll run it through that way. It'll cut the bevel. We'll flip it over and run through the other way. The bevel doesn't go all the way to the top. Uh, I probably can't see it, but uh, there's a little an eighth of an inch flat left on the, on the top here. So rather than measure, I just went ahead and I, I marked an eighth of an inch down on the little piece and then I um, made a couple of test cuts till I got the bevel to end right at that eighth of an inch mark. So. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cut the first, we'll cut the first. All right, there's one. All right, that looks pretty good, so we're going to go ahead and make the cut on our um, actual work piece. came out real good. A little touch up sanding and we'll be good to go. All right, because we're joining this whole thing together with mitered corners, uh, which are not very strong, we want to reinforce it with some splines. So what I've done is I've taken one of the, the test side piece and I've gone over to the table saw and I set up a uh, with, the, with the blade still at 22 and a half degrees, we run it through the saw so we cut this groove here in the ends. Um, what we'll do is a spline will go into that. We'll have matching grooves into corner pieces uh, and all the sides so we'll we'll just stick a little spline in there to do that. That's about an eighth of an inch deep and it's about an eighth of an inch from this bottom part of the bottom part of the miter right there. Um, took a little while to tweak this saw to get it to the setup that we wanted but now we got it to where we need it we can go ahead and make the cuts on the end of these side pieces in the front and the back. All right, moving ahead on our project here, I got the uh, main body of the music box dry fitted together. Uh, there's no glue on any of it yet. I, I went ahead and I cut the corner blocks to the to the right size. I cut some splines to go in the grooves that we cut. Um, the gr splines are a little bit proud. Once I get glue on them, I'll go ahead and trim them up with a chisel or something to flatten that, flush that up. I cut a couple of dados in the in the side quarter inch dados and installed this quarter inch divider. Uh, the music box is going to go in this area and in this area over here. It's just a I don't know, put stuff, I guess. Um, I got a couple of MDF corner blocks that I, I right angle corner blocks I, I'm going to install once I do the glue up just to make sure everything stays nice and square. I'll clamp those in there. We're just going to use a band clamp to uh, uh, put the thing together. So um, I'm going to take it apart and sand inside anything that needs to be sanded because it'll be nearly impossible to do it after we uh, glue it up so any final sanding or touch up that needs to be done on the inside I'm going to go ahead and do that and then um, I'm going to go ahead and glue it up. Alright we got our base uh, of our 
music box loosely fit together with this plywood uh, bottom. What happens is this glues to the top and it follows the, pretty much follows the shape of the, uh, the music box. Um, what I had to do was uh, cut a groove in each side piece and then cut a rabbit on the, on the uh, plywood so that they all fit together and form some kind of, uh, so they fit together and the, this is all fairly flush. It needs a little bit of sanding but not too much. So I'll go ahead and use a, a band clamp again to, to put all that together, checking of course to make sure it's square. Uh, then we got some feet to glue on the bottom of it, and other than that, uh, we can go ahead and glue the. Well, no, we can't either. We got it after we get the this all glued up. We got a routed decorative uh, profile on the edge here to give it a little bit of, a little bit of pizzazz because right now it's kind of kind of plain. So, let's move on. All right, our base is all glued up. We're going to go ahead and route a profile on the upper edge of the uh, the base. Uh, I have in the the uh, router table I have a uh, 532 Roman OG bit. I made myself a temporary fence which is uh, zero clearance there which is keep us from chipping out anything uh, on our piece. What we're going for is a uh, a piece, of, a profile that kind of looks like this. Um, it's called a Roman OG so that's what we want on the uh, on the top edge of our um, base of our music box stand so I'm gonna go ahead I, I've got the bit raised to where we're gonna make our final pass what we do is we turn it over and run it through the bit and, and it should be good so let's uh, get set up for that and give it a shot All right, well, there we go. We got our uh, profile rounded on the side of our uh, side of the base of our um, music box. I think it came out pretty good. A little uh, final sanding, and we'll be good with that part. We're almost ready to, uh, well, now we're ready to glue the feet on the bottom of this, uh, the base, and then uh, go ahead and glue the, uh, the body of the music box to the, to the base, and then we'll move on to the lid. All right, well, I thought I'd get you caught up on our music box project. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I worked on it. Uh, had other commitments last weekend, wasn't able to spend any time on it. Uh, but since uh, the last video, I've gone ahead and glued up the top. Uh, I glued the inlay that I bought from inlays.com, uh, and I'll put their link in the uh, video notes. But I glued that to a piece of, piece of Baltic birch plywood. Uh, I got some... Um, inlay going around the outside edge here to on our pieces of walnut and the walnut pretty much m mimics the the shape of the the base um, I've done a little preliminary sanding on it but it needs to have some more done a um, little bit of touch up on it on the inside I, I glued a piece of uh, walnut veneer to one to stabilize it but two to dress up the inside of the uh, of the music box so uh, that's pretty much the lid. The the the, the base I've got, gone ahead and glued the uh, the top piece to the base. Uh, you saw us route the uh, the round over, or the uh, OG on the on the base, and I glued the little feet onto the bottom of it. So, kind of gets it up off the table and elevates it a little bit. It looks kind of nice. Uh, so the next thing to do is is um, route some profiles on the edges of the. Of the lid, we're going to route like a round over me on the top and a, and a cove on the bottom to kind of lighten the lid up a little bit. It's a little clunky the way that it is with the edges, so um, we need to do something with that. And once once that's done, then we can go ahead and do the final sanding. And after that, then really the only thing left is to uh, uh, mortise in the hinges uh, and then um, start to put some finish on it. Once we do some final sanding and touch up. I got some stick-on felt that I'll put inside the uh, inside the box uh, area to to clean that up so it looks kind of nice on the inside. So 
overall, it's a, it, it's a nice project. Sometimes on these little projects, there's as many pieces, as much work as there is a building a big case piece. So uh, I'm not quite sure uh, which one I like or don't like better. I like doing both of them, but um, I think I'm ready to build a buffet or something or a bookcase or something. <laughs> I've done quite a few small projects uh, of late, so um, I think I'm, I'm due for some large case piece. It'll be, be a lot of fun, so. All right, well, that's that. Uh, we're going ahead and uh, get the router set up, and we'll um, uh, route the edges, route the profiles on the lid. All right, we're getting ready to route a uh, quarter-inch round over on the, on the top edge of our uh, lid here. Uh, what I need to do is turn it over, and it's a similar process to what I did before. we got to do all the little edges and all the little corners. and, and uh, I got the bit set so that it's about half way up as far as we need it. Um, I'm going to cut a little test piece on this little uh, hunk of walnut here and see what it looks like. And then, then we'll, um, uh, if that turns out all right, then we'll go ahead and do the first pass on the lid. All right, well, this is what we were going for. We uh, I'll try and get this so you can see it. There's a top. It really can't see it that well and until you kind of turn it sideways, and you can see we got a little uh, rounder with a little lip cut along the all the edges there. So that um, just needs a little touch-up sanding, and then we're pretty much done with that. Now our next project is to route a cove in the bottom of the, uh, the bottom part of this uh, lid. So we're going to get set up to do that. All right, well, let me get you caught up on where we are with our project. Uh, I think when we were last uh, on the video, we were doing a round over on the uh, top edge of the top edge of the lid. Uh, I went ahead and off camera did a uh, it's a little uh, cove type of uh, deal there. Let me see if I can get it so you can see it, but. Anyway, it gives a little uh, treatment to the bottom of the lid, so it makes it um, not look quite as clunky as I said earlier. Uh, I've mortised for the hinges. We're using a nice uh, Bresso hinge I got from uh, Rockler. It's got a positive stop, so it only goes, it opens about 95 degrees, so the lid tilts back a little bit, about 5 degrees, so that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't fall, slam closed. Uh, I've mortised that into each, into the, uh, into the lid, into the. Nope. I just use a router and mortise those uh, mortise those hinges into there, um, and then there's a, a corresponding mortise on the uh, on the bottom to, for the uh, other side of the hinge. So uh, those are all ready. I, I've test fit them. They're all ready to be screwed on. So we're doing pretty good shape with that. It's time to. So, it's time to put some finish on this project. I, I've sanded everything to 220, except the top part here. I sanded the top to uh, 320. Uh, one, that's what the uh, instructions that came with the inlay basically said to do, and and two, I think it it uh, smoothed a lot of that, um, smoothed a lot of it out out there pretty nice. Uh, we'll be building up some uh, finish on the top because there's a little bit of irregularities and there's some gaps between the. Uh, uh, between the pieces. So what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to seal this thing up with some General Finishes Arma Seal, which is a uh, an oil urethane top coat. We're going to put one nice coat of that on, and it takes six or eight hours for it to dry. So if I do it this afternoon, it's about, I don't know, three o'clock or something like that. And let it sit all night, it should be uh, pretty good shape. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come back and spray it with some uh, Def Satin Lacquer. Um, that's going to be our final finish. Uh, after I put some, uh, I'll probably use shellac or sa sanding sealer or something to build up a layer, uh, some finish on the top piece just to fill in those gaps and whatnot. So uh, we're ready to go ahead and uh, put the oil on. I got my gloves, some rags, uh, I got my painter's points, so we're all ready to go. Let me get set up and we'll come back and show that. All right, well, I got the. The urethane uh, armaceal all uh, stirred up, ready to go. 
uh, I have a great urge to start on this side of the on this side of the project, but I'm actually going to start on the back so I can uh, save that part for later, I guess. So you just wipe this stuff on. It's really no different than any other oil. Um, it's a it's a knife finish though, but it's uh, pretty much the same as any oil finish. Um, We'll make sure you get good coverage. Fill all the, get it in all the corners and all the uh, gaps. I go ahead and do where the hinges go. Doesn't hurt nothing. Seals the wood up underneath the hinge. This little piece of veneer underneath here soaking the thing, soaking it up pretty well. So I think I'll just go ahead and rub a little bit more on there. Take a dry part of the rag, maybe wipe some of it off a little bit. I'll tell you, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing more beautiful than walnut when you, if I can get it so you can see it. There, there's nothing more beautiful than walnut when you, when you start to put a finish on it. It really. Uh, uh, makes the grain come out and looks really, really nice. So, all right, we'll go to the uh, to the to the money side here and see if we can what we can do with this uh, this side here. Oh man, I don't know how this is going to show up on the video, but I'll, I'll certainly take some uh, pictures of it and put it put it on the in the final video. So. Let's get some oil on this thing and we can put it down, take a look at it. Well, let's see if I can tilt it up a little bit, maybe on a finger point. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Uh, it, it is really a uh, it's really a nice looking nice looking piece once you get some oil on it and, and uh, make it. And I'm really trying to stay away from the word "make it pop" because I really hate that. But uh, it is about as descriptive as you can get. So that that part looks real nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, the the base of the of the uh, music box is a little less dramatic, so I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off. Once I get everything all done, I'll I'll come back and show you final final product. All right, we got a good coat of armor seal on everything, so we're uh, we're good to go with that. Um, I said we'll let it dry overnight. We got a, of course we have to take our rag and dispose of it properly. Make sure we don't wad it up and throw it in the corner someplace, so. It, Decides to start itself on fire during the middle of the night, which would always be exciting. Uh, we'll lay that out someplace and let it let it dry good. All right, so really the only thing I have left then is um, once this dries overnight, um, I'll see how it is in the morning. Um, then we'll start putting some, uh, building up a finish on the top here with some shellac uh, or shellac seal or de-wax shellac is what I want to use. Uh, we'll build that up and that'll... Finish, uh, finish that off. It'll make that nice. Fill in any gaps and make that top uh, nice and smooth. So uh, that'll be good. So we're uh, pretty much good to go. This is a fun project. Uh, I got some stick-on felt to put in the bottom of this thing. I got to drill some holes for the uh, the music box once I do that, and then we're uh, put the hinges on and call it done. That's how I made this nice little music box. I hope you enjoyed watching the video as much as I enjoyed make, making the project. So, uh, again, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.